Kenny here with Gardening Simplified. Today I'm in the kitchen and we're fixing to make some ghee. So let's get into it. Now we have some butter of uh, various kinds. Uh, we normally keep our butter in the freezer and I think we got, have somewhere close to 29 pounds. Now that's a lot of butter. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into ghee or clarified butter. And what ghee is, or there's a process for making it, is first you have to get your butter in a pot. Now, I recommend using a pot that has a clad bottom so it dissipates the heat good. It's less likely to burn. And what we're going to do is we're going to start this burner and we're just going to leave it there on high at first, uh, get it warmed up, get it cooked down. And what we're doing is, what ghee is, is or clarified butter, it makes it where it's shelf stable. And depending on who you listen to, uh, some say a year, some say two years, some say three years, some say indefinitely. Now I'm going to say because you, when you do this process, it takes the water out and it takes the fat out. And what that does is it, it leaves you with a, a an oil and it does uh, set semi-solid but this oil is capable of being heated hotter than any other cooking oil so it's ideal for uh, different situations in the kitchen it's as far as uh, you can uh, use this for frying it it's flat it's uh, smoke point is uh, 485 degrees so you can do your uh, own research and you can see how well this works but this is ideal especially say for homesteaders or uh, preppers or the the normal people like us that uh, we can things we buy things when it's on sale now we do freeze our butter uh, whenever we buy it and we keep butter for quite a while in the freezer because it keeps it fresh being it's kept at a real uh, cold temperature. But when you do it this way, you don't have to refrigerate it. Uh, once you open a bottle, uh, it's supposed to be good for uh, up to six months. Now, uh, we have in the past, we had been putting this in cup bottles. And this is what ghee looks like. Uh, it's it's kind of like say it's semi-solid. It it can turn a little bit oily if it if it gets warm. And we were putting it in cup bottles, but uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to use uh, pint bottles because we we do use quite a bit now. Ghee and depends on how you process it. You can see it's melting down now, but depending on how you process it. It's going to uh, cook down, and if you uh, do it right, it it ends up with a flavor, say, similar to uh, theater popcorn uh, butter. It it has a really a really kind of nutty, uh, real good flavor. Uh, we use it in all kinds of things with cooking. Of course, we do use butter too. But what we're going to do is we're going to continue to cook this down and uh, we're going to heat it up till it just starts to boil. Once it starts to boil, uh, we're going to uh, turn it down to a simmer and we're going to cover it. We, our pot here has a clear lid so it works out good, but we're not going to cover it uh, all the way. Now, sometimes when it's cooking out the water, it will uh, take and pop and in a case like that, you don't want it to come out and pop all over. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this uh, lid on here, but we're going to leave it so the moisture can come out. We don't want it to keep the moisture in there. Uh, we want it to come out once it's simmered long enough, and we'll go through the process. The fats will start uh, coming together on the bottom. They'll drop out, and it'll uh, clarify into a nice golden liquid. And uh, once we cook it to that stage, uh, and we'll talk about how to know when it's ready to start uh, bottling up. But once you cook it to that stage, 
then you have a uh, product that is shelf stable. Now we've got all our butter melted and it's getting close to temperature. And as you can see right here, it's kind of got a golden uh, color to it. It was kind of milky uh, cream, but now it's getting hot. It's not quite to a simmering point, it, but it's almost there. And uh, I still have it on high. I'm watching it and I'm actually, I'm stirring it and I'll put the, the lid up on, keep the, the fan here in the kitchen from uh, blowing it and causing to extend the time on it. But it's working at the process, but we'll leave that cracked. I, I could see steam there a little bit. And uh, right now it's cooking the water out. Uh, once it starts to boiling a little bit where I start seeing bubbles, we'll turn the heat uh, down on it and uh, we'll let it simmer uh, for a good while. All right, now you can see it's uh, starting to bubble. Now, we don't want it to bubble much higher than this whenever it bubbles. If it starts bubbling faster, we'll turn it down. As it heats up, it's going to uh, start bubbling quicker. Now, as long as the fat is in there and the water is in there, it's, it's going to be more uh, active to boil. Once it starts cooking that out, uh, it'll settle itself down. And you can see occasionally you'll have like a, a big bubble come on there, kind of like a... I want to say maybe like a volcano uh, kind of erupting in a place. And that's the reason why we put the lid on. Now, this is a big pot. Uh, most people, whenever they tell you about making beef, they'll tell you to uh, do a pound or two of butter. Now, there's about five and a half pounds in here. We don't actually measure it out. We put in a, about as much as we think we uh, would like. Now, we don't put too much more than that because uh, we don't want it to be real high on the pot. This Once it starts bubbling good and it's uh, slowly starting to bubble more, uh, we'll turn it down, but it'll want to rise. And if you're doing it in a small pot, uh, you'll, you'll definitely want to do smaller batches. Some people even do this uh, with a method and they do it in the oven. They'll set a certain temperature and they uh, let go for so long and it works pretty good for them uh, but for me and, and to be sure that the that I have a good quality product in the end because uh, like I say I'm going to store this and I don't really know how long before this batch will be used up but I don't want it to spoil uh, before that time. This is not uh, the same as other canning methods. Now you can see the steam coming off. It's, it's releasing the water. We're going to turn this down just a little bit because uh, it's starting to boil a little bit faster. You don't want to speed up this process because what you'll do is you'll end up cooking the fats before all the fats have separated and all the moisture is coming out. And that's the reason why we don't we don't turn the heat up real high. We want we want this to simmer. Uh, but like I say, in the start of this process, it's going to actually boil faster uh, than towards the end. But we're gonna we're gonna keep going. We're not gonna worry about this uh, foam that's on top of here. Uh, we're not going to skim this off. We're going to let this go ahead and, and cook and go through the process, and it should reduce that on down. But uh, like I say, we've turned it down here a couple of times, but it's still uh, starting to go pretty quick. So we're going to uh, turn it down a little bit more. Now, the during this process, the closer it gets uh, through here, the the uh, more irregular the bubbles will be. You might have some that are uh, that 
tend to want to splash up or pop out. It's it's kind of like uh, putting water in bacon grease. If I wanted to relate it to something, uh, it'll get kind of volatile. But we're going to continue uh, to cook this down. And now, as you can see, the foam that's on top, as I stirred this around, it has uh, got less and less. It's, it's going through its process now. I do make sure, and I like to use a spatula, but I make sure that it's not uh, sticking to the bottom, uh, that it is stirred around, make sure it's even. The heat is turned uh, way down, but uh, it will continue to, to boil. Uh, and it's going through the process. You can kind of smell uh, a little bit like it's getting closer to ghee. It is uh, turning more of a golden or a, a more translucent uh, look to it. And as this goes, what it's doing is it's cooking uh, the fats out of this oil. So they're going to start settling onto the bottom. And we're going to continue to cook this and, and we're going to keep stirring it. Once it uh, goes a while, we'll actually be able to start uh, seeing the fats in this. And we'll know it's getting pretty close. And we're going to cook this until the fats start to... Uh, actually, we're going to uh, brown them just a little bit. While this is cooking down, there's another thing I want to mention. Now, a lot of uh, people uh, will tell you use unsalted butter, which that is that's fine, that's great. Uh, but now you can use salted butter or unsalted. Now we do have salted butter. Uh, the uh, fats that drop out will be really salty. Uh, now you can give the leftovers to. Uh, your animals, your, your dog, and uh, they, they really do like them, uh, but if you use salted butter, it's going to have a lot more salt in it, So, and I don't know how that will affect uh, the animal, but like I say, you can make it with either one, and if you're planning to feed uh, what's left to your animal, you might want to use uh, unsalted. Okay, we're getting further along in the process now. I stir this occasionally, and I want to make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom because I don't want it to stick to the bottom until I get to the end process of browning. But you can see we're starting to get uh, little chunks of uh, fat in there. What it's doing is starting to form together, starting to get solid. And uh, that's what you're looking for. That lets you know that you're getting uh, close to the end of the process. It's still steaming, so we do know we have uh, water in it still. And that's the reason why we don't want to cook it too fast. We want to be able to get the water out, but we want these fats to form on the... You can see right there. But you want these fats to to start forming and and uh, clumping up, and once they do that, they'll settle out. They're heavier than the oil, and they'll settle out to the bottom. Okay, you can see that all the foam is kind of cooked down. There are bubbles up here, but the foam itself is cooked down. Now, as you you're uh, making sure it's not sticking, but you can see now this fat how it's kind of browned. That's the point you want to get to whenever you're making your ghee. You want uh, that that part to be out. Now, there shouldn't be anything uh, floating. Now, one thing I didn't tell you was while you're doing this and your phone comes up on the side, take the time to, to run around and keep that cleaned off and down in your mix because if you don't, that that part of it won't be uh, the consistency of everything else and you'll have a problem. Now what we're going to do is we're going to let this cool down enough to where it uh, stops bubbling. That way we don't have to worry about it uh, 
uh, lift anything off the bottom. And we're just going to uh, scoop it up. Now, if for some reason you had something on top of there and you need to skim it off, a uh, little strainer works real good uh, just to go around on there and to pick that up. And you can, when you fill your jar, uh, you can put that strainer down. If you happen to catch any of the fat particles or something, which you're going to try not to, they usually stay to the bottom. But if you do happen to pick some up, uh, you won't have to worry about them uh, getting into your jar unless they're really, really fine. And this is a pretty fine uh, strainer here, so uh, that'll take care of that. But we're going to let this cool down just a little bit because that... Uh, clad bottom on that pan is holding that heat and it's going to take it just a little bit before it stops bubbling. Okay, you can see just how crystal clear this is. We're going to put it off into this jar. Now you want to fill these jars about a quarter inch from the top. So, and you might not necessarily need your funnel when you top these off, depending on what type of thing you're using. But we're going to fill that on up. And we're going to take in. Wipe this lid, this top down, make sure there's nothing on this where we're going to put a ring. And you want to put this on there good and snug. Now, this wheel... Pull a little vacuum on here. It's not going to pull much of a vacuum because there's not a lot of air space in here. I don't recommend storing these without rings. Now, if if you're set on that, that's fine. If you store this long term, you want to and you want to make sure that there's not a problem with it. All you have to do is open it up and smell it. Now, if you see anything growing on it, which I doubt you will. But if it smells like it's rancid or something that don't smell like it normally uh, would, then I don't recommend uh, consuming it. But you shouldn't have any problem. But like I say, I do uh, recommend that you store these and leave the rings on them. But there you go. You can see this is just some uh, really pretty stuff. It is now shelf stable. Uh, and we call this this ghee and and it's a an excellent product uh for those of you that, that want something self-stable and there you go we've got our last batch going but we've got all these uh done up and uh we're ready to put this ghee on the shelf and if you, I hope you found something uh, useful out of this video. And if you want to see more like this, self-sufficiency, preserving, growing, all those kind of things, well, of course, hit that subscribe, hit the bell, select all, give it a big thumbs up, and share this video. Enjoy that gardening experience.